are working now hi that is a bigger version right yes i kind of designed my own uh, what i thought would be a queen i'm hoping it's going to be about a queen size when it gets done beautiful i love it now tell me what what color is it it it's, it's kind of hard it's to tell. Uh, grays it's okay. a gray color and kind of a light green okay on one and then the other colors are kind of a gray here and a heavily color beautiful and what colors are your hearts going to be well If you take Wendy with you to get fabric, you get colors. <laughs> Yay, Wendy. <laughs> I love those colors. That is going to be beautiful. And it's going to be interesting. Um, like I actually, after I wrote my questions to you, um, I went back on and I just didn't have the directions for how to put the hearts on there. But okay. then I went back on and I downloaded the whole thing again and okay, came up with your instruction sheet on how to position them and everything. So, but I do want to know, do you recommend using the iron-on fleece or not the Pellon for the heart? That, um the fusible fleece yes you can either so behind the heart yeah applicate, yes because it's going to go on right over the cross in the center of the kisses block yes and if you fuse directly onto it if you fuse the applique shape directly onto it then you'll get seam lines showing up whereas if you Put the fusible, you can either do fusible fleece or just put a piece of batting down. Okay. And that will um that 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 will kind of eliminate the piecing lines coming through okay. onto your applique shape. Okay. So yes, I do recommend putting either the fusible fleece or batting down. Okay. And, and the fusible like fleece, that. you kind of said to put face down, the sticky side down, and then stitch it, and then cut trim around it, and then yeah. then you can start appliquing on top of it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then um, you'd asked about the template plastic. So yes. Um, for the small, so for the four and four inch and six inch, and I think for the eight inch, um. Four columns. inch, five inch, and six inch columns. That was it. Four inch, five inch, and six inch columns. Um, using the template plastic to kind of shrink your hoop to the exact size that you want it so that we can minimize the amount of backing and batting, backing fabric okay. and batting that we're using. Okay. Um, and also drawing on it very specific lines to make it easy to line up the whole quilt sandwich mm -hmm. um, so that there's a minimum amount of adjustments to do of the design in the hoop and uh, so you're asking is it possible to tape the template material together yeah. to make it large enough I don't see why not okay I don't see why not because um as long as I would overlap just a little bit and tape okay. it from the front and the back Mm -hmm. then I think okay. you should be just fine I see Marilyn just popped up she's got her templates made if we want to see them okay let me spotlight Marilyn here I ask Marilyn to unmute and Hi. okay so I made one the I do used it for the five inch blocks but I marked my seven inch background and put tape over it so it wouldn't, I think I got yeah. it backwards, but anyway, so it wouldn't yes. mark off. And then I made one for the square, and I went ahead and made one for the double. Same five-inch block. Um, oh, okay. What I was doing was the um, pillow. 
and it had you know two five inch squares together mm -hmm. so if you use the two five inch squares or two of whatever or if you're going to do three just do you know a template for the three. Oh, okay. anyway i okay. had one of each because i figured i'll use them again yeah um judy will you be using your super giant hoop on your yeah um, and it's about a nine and a quarter by uh 10 12 inches or something i have it written down somewhere the um we um luminaire or solaris luminaire okay so the the, the it's a dime um oh, dime a... snap hoop magnetic hoop okay so the night um the 240 by 360 uh i think so yes okay because you could also do it in the in the super giant hoop that you've got with the luminaire and that would allow you 6 12 18 not with the 18 inch blocks are you a a oh my goodness my brain is going crazy here um okay you've got four inch and six inch did you put any five inch blocks in there no a four six eight and twelve okay four eight okay um so you're probably actually not going to gain anything by using okay. the super big okay. hoop then. Okay. It's yeah. the only magnetic hoop I have for it uh, is that size. So it is quite large. Yeah. That it's, I think it's probably the 240 by 360. Yeah. So, and it wouldn't give you any advantage really to use the, the bigger one anyway. Okay. Um. What I was going to say, and this would be for anybody who does want to use the super big hoop, maybe for the four inch or the five inch blocks, because you could fit three five inch blocks in the super tall hoop. Um, it's actually easier to use the design for just one block and also for when you're stitching two at a time. So hoop as if you're going to stitch two two blocks at a time. But instead of using the double design, actually use the single design twice. Okay. And I found that to be easier to get each block completely precise. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then I'll just make it the template. I, I know the kind that I purchased or have access to, I have to tape them to, I, it's not big enough to fit underneath to cut the center out okay yeah i don't yeah. see why it um overlap it by half an inch or so and tape it on the top and underneath i don't see why that would okay it we're, we're not doing anything um on it we're not we're not doing anything on it we're just we're simply taping the fabric to it so there's nothing strenuous going on here I have one more thing. Um, I did mark the center for the double one. Mm -hmm. I marked the center and that helped me get the seam line in the right place for placement. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing that I did, I taped down the background fabric first and then I put the batting on there and put a little bit of tape on it instead of trying to tape the, tape, the batting and the background fabric because it seemed to not stick as well. Um, the background fabric wasn't holding enough. So I taped the background fabric on here first, then put the batting and just used a little bit of tape on it. Now there's a slight difference between what you're doing, Marilyn, and what Jude is going to be doing because you are only okay. quilting okay. two blocks at a time. So you, yes. it was super easy to put the background fabric down first and then the batting on the top. If Judy is quilting the long strips, Okay. Uh, you, you you really want to get the um you you really want to get your quilt sandwich made for the entire strip. So you'll have your backing fabric, your batting, which is going to be a very specific size, and then you want to um put the quilt top or you know it, it, the the strip the 
um, the blocks also very specifically down the whole strip. And I learned that you really, really, really do need to baste all the way around the quilt top. Even if it's just like an eighth to a quarter of an inch in from the edge, that will- On, solve... You're talking the columns, Sarah? Yes, yes. Okay. Quilt top equal okay. column, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, all, all the way down the sides, so- for the smaller project, and, and it, you know, especially the pillow, when we were, um, we we had single blocks and we had double blocks. Excuse me, one second. Ruthie is trying to do an escape here. <laughs> um, <laughs> with the single blocks and the double blocks, yes, absolutely. Put the background fabric down first, then the batting, and make sure that each layer is secured. But for the columns. You really want to have them basted together. Okay. That would help a lot. Um, yeah. Ahead ahead of time. Yeah. Just before you go, I'll show you my mini project. Yay! That is so cool. Oh, I love the pink. That is beautiful. So the only thing I would do different is I'd put a wider border on it because the quarter I did a quarter inch and it's really hard with that pipe binding to get them to the corners to really look neat and tidy. Okay. Well, let me see. I see Christine is here and Brian is here, and we are on the two hands countdown. <laughs> I think. Hold on a minute. Let's see. A week on Sunday, we get started. Um, let me see. Is anybody else here? I don't know everybody that's coming, but Christine and Bryony, that is what we are going to be making. Starting a week on Monday, actually, with the stitching. I think we have a, a I don't know, meet and greet cocktails. Who knows whatever it is on Sunday night. So I'm super excited about that. So thank you. That's exactly what we're going to be making, Judy. It was a good, I love this project. Good. Truly. Yeah. Do good. you think they can do it in a week? Given that we are in a retreat setting, potentially unfamiliar machines, lots of getting to know each other happening. Do you do quilt to your will? What? Do you quilt till you wilt? <laughs> I have no drop. idea how that bit's going to be set up. No, quilt till you wilt, like a flower wilts. Yeah, you... I I don't know. I I um I don't know. I guess we'll figure that out when we get there. <laughs> With you there guiding them, I'm sure they'll be able to stay on task. I'm I was a little slower than that. Okay. Yeah. We, we, well, the plan is that we get to do it and we get to finish up with the no hands pipe binding. That's oh, good. the plan. So, okay. but I, I can have plans and they don't always work. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank, thank you, you so Sarah. much, Judy. I'm excited to see this quilt as it comes together. It's looking fabulous on your wall there. I am too. Stay in touch. Keep sending pictures, progress pictures. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye.